In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process I use for creating these slimly profiled wire wrapped rings, perfect for stackable ring designs. If you're interested in other rings that would complement this stackable design, leave me a comment below and let me know you'd like to see more stackable designs. We're going to start this project by creating the shank first. I've cut three segments of 21 gauge square and five and a half inches and three feet of 22 gauge half round. I'm going to start by taking the two ends of my half round and sliding down till I find the center of the wire. I've bent this so the flat side is facing in and the round sides are facing out. I'm going to slide this loop over all three of my squares and fold it around the squares twice on each side. From there I can flatten the coil to my squares and slide it until I find the center of my square wires. Starting this in the center of the bottom of my ring shank gives me equal working distance on both sides of the square when it comes to creating the face and setting the stone for the ring. I'm going to go ahead and wrap my half round around both sides of the square, keeping careful count for how many rotations it takes on each side to reach the desired length. I'm going to go ahead and do one side on my own, and then I'll show you the process as I go through the second side. I went ahead and coiled 45 full rotations around my squares on this side. I like to keep track of it by counting each half rotation. Now that my wires are a little bit shorter and easier to manage, I can show you the, the method that I use for that. making sure to keep as much pressure as I can with my thumb and forefinger as I rotate. Helps make sure that my coils are even and smooth all the way through the ring shank. I'm gonna go ahead and coil the rest of this shank and we'll move on from there. Now that we have the complete coil for our ring shank, I can take it and bend it around my mandrel, where there should be just enough space between our two coil endings for our stone to sit comfortably. To connect our ring shank together, I've cut six inches of 18 gauge half round that I'm just going to bend in half so I can use the halfway point 
to connect our ring shank together and have equal working distance on either side of the half round. The direction that you choose to wrap this half round does make a difference in the way that the piece will finish. I want to make sure that I'm coming over the top towards my square's endings. As we move on to the next step, I'll show you why this is important. For now, we're going to go ahead and flatten that coil, similar to how we started our ring shank in the beginning with the smaller half round. And one at a time, I'm just going to pass my 18 gauge through the center of the ring and flatten it each time with my pliers. I'm going to go for a total of four coils all the way around before sliding and adjusting the ring to size. Our stone for this project is a five millimeter white moonstone cap. Depending on the size of ring that you're going for, you may need to coil more or less around our squares together. If your stone is larger, you'll need to do more coils. You just want to make sure that the width is approximately the same, if not slightly larger than where your stone will be sitting on those four coils. Once we have the sizing about where we need it, we're going to take both ends of the square and slide them through so that my half round that wraps the shank together and my half round that holds the two pieces of the shank together are flush next to each other. I'm going to pinch and bend 90 degrees. Then I'm going to turn it around and do the same for the other side. My ring shank should look something like this. Now that I have it locked to the size that I need, I'm going to go ahead and just move the outer two wires so that only my innermost square is pointing straight up. This is the square that I'm going to go ahead and take my half round left over from the shank and wrap around. I want to make sure that it's as tight as possible so there's no awkward gap between the connection from our shank to the connection to our square. And I want to make sure that I'm wrapping with the flat side of the half round facing in. fair amount of length coiled around that square, I'm going to do the same on the other side. From here, I'm just eyeballing for length, approximating the same amount of coils around each side. If you like to be extra particular, you could count the number of rotations around each square on both sides. Now that we have those wires out of the way, I'm going to use our leftover 18 gauge half round to set our stone into place. I'm going to go ahead and slide the stone into the setting and bring my 18 gauge across the top 
I'm going to pinch the stone into place and gently form my 18 gauge around the stone on both sides. It'll begin to create this spiral pattern. This is where it's important that when you connect the ring shank together with that half round, that you work in the proper direction. In, this, in the case of this ring design, my squares here on the top left are going to wrap around the top to the right side of the ring shank to be secured. And of course, with the opposite, my, my wires here on the bottom right will wrap around to the left. With my 18 gauge ending where it did, it naturally follows that line of flow or progression so that they can be secured along with my wires. If I had wrapped the opposite direction with my 18 gauges, it becomes a little bit more difficult to smoothly transition them into being the setting wires for our ring design. Once we have them in place, we can go ahead and carefully wrap them around the ring shank, passing it through one side at a time. I want to make sure that they don't fall out of place and that my stone is still firm and secure in the setting. I can tighten as needed, making sure that my stone sits evenly in the center of our ring. Before trimming these endings short and pinching them flat to the surface of our ring shank. Next, I'm going to take my coiled squares, gently bend them along the same line. To add a little bit of flair to the ring design, I'm actually going to secure our next square before connecting our coiled square. Moving outwards from the stone, we have first our coiled square, next our center from the ring shank, and that's actually going to be the square that we secure next to the piece. I'm going to take it and bend it around the base of our coil, giving this nice little curved accent that I can go ahead and then follow the half round from our setting with. I can bend that through the ring shank, cut it short, and secure it to the face of the ring. As you pass each of our wires through the center of the ring, it's important to keep in mind that you want the flat side of the square to be what contacts the finger, not one of the corners. This will make the ring much more comfortable for the wearer. Now that we have one side, I'm going to go ahead and repeat that process again for the other side. The next wire to connect will be our coiled. In my case, I need to add just a few more rotations around so that it can end comfortably just before diving through the ring shank. Once I have the proper length, I can trim that short. I want to make sure that that ending ends up between the wire itself and the ring shank. And then I'm going to pass the wire through bring it up through to the other side, and trim that ending 
short, secure it to the shank of the ring. I'm going to repeat the same process for my other side here. Coiling just a couple more times so I have the proper length. Maybe one more. Then I can trim that short. And secure it to the shank of the ring. Last but not least, we're going to go ahead and just take that last square wire, wrapping it around the outside of our coiled structure, bringing it through, trimming it short, and then pinching it down to the surface of the ring. And on the other side, And here we have our finished ring. It's a nice, relatively slimly profiled, doesn't sit too high off the finger, and is perfect for stackable designs. A special thank you goes out to all the names on your screen for supporting this channel through Patreon. What I'm doing would not be possible without their support. If you're interested in helping support the channel, Follow the link in the description below this video. If you found this video helpful, leave me a like on the video. This helps me a lot with the visibility of my videos in YouTube's algorithms. To be the first to know when I upload new content, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when new videos are available. Thank you for watching and happy wrapping.